Steve Messler, Olympic gold medalist, is with us right now. Steve, welcome to the show. How are uh, you? Thanks, guys. I'm wonderful. You brought in the gold medal? I they, did. Oh, it's, there it is. It's like a centerpiece. This is the actual call. I'm sure you've heard it, but I'll play I haven't. It. He got through 50-50 clean. 93 miles per hour. Steve Holcomb has raced for gold. And let the record show. After 62 years, it's Holcomb, Olsen, Messler, and Thomas Evans that are golden for USA Bobsled. Because I guess the it's only... got to swell you up with pride a little bit That's just awesome. hearing that, you know? That's the first time I've heard it, actually. Really? Yeah. The, the problem, though, is... Don't ditch it. And that was a fast, crazy track. I mean, to the point where other people were saying, um, we're going home. We're not yeah, even going to run. Yeah, the, that Dutch, one, the, the yeah. Dutch packed up shop. Yeah. Right. Were you surprised at that, by the way? I really was. Edwin's, uh, Edwin's a good guy. and I, you know he He's a former medalist, isn't he? Uh, no, he, well, but he's medaled on World Cup. He's medaled oh, on World, World Cup. Cup. I mean, okay, he is right. a, legitimate, he's a legitimate guy. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not like the Serbians packing up shop. It's, yeah. I mean, Dutch, the Dutch are you know, they're a top 10 program for sure. And, uh, yeah, I really felt bad for the other athletes. I don't feel bad for the driver. It's his decision. Uh, you know, he, he unfortunately has, has lost a lot of respect amongst all the other bobsledders because we do the sport we do. It is a scary sport. Bad things can happen. Unfortunately, the Georgian luge guy, l- loser that you know died at the beginning of the games. We know that. You, you know, you step up every day, and you know all it takes, and it can't even be anybody's fault. It can be uh, a rope in there wound up rubbing wrong overnight, wound up being set wrong overnight, and got and you know was compromised, and something happens. Loses control of the steering. Anything can happen at any point. I mean, it happened in St. Moritz in five, six years ago. One of our two men sleds crashed just because one of the ropes you know, dropped out of the guy out of the driver's hands, uh, and they wound up crashing. They were going not 153 kilometers an hour, not 95 miles an hour when it happened. But uh, it's something you do. And yeah, the first day of four man at that track, every time we're there, is scary. Yeah. You're at the top of the track, and you would prefer somebody else to go in your spot. Well, and you saw some of the footage of other crashes, like the I believe it was the German women that had, was that the yeah. nasty crash where it was upside down and the, yeah, the one Romy woman came flew out the, out the back. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, that was pretty scary. I think yeah. that was around the time when the Dutch made the decision not to compete. Right around there, yeah. right? You know, I mean, crashing a bobsled is about the scariest thing you'll ever go. I'm not. Gonna I didn't see any airbags. Were you it's, ever were you ever in a crash? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been in plenty of crashes before. I've kicked. I've been that person getting thrown out of the sled sliding to Lake Placid four or five years ago. What uh, happens when when it's going through? Right, you just you just because you're not in control. It's pure misery. Yeah, it is pure uncontrolled misery. You're just sliding you're, at will. You have the you have the, the sled is on top. The weight of the sled is on top of you. The weight of the other three guys is on top of you as well because they're pushing the sled down. Right, and it's pretty much you know it, it's every man for themselves at that point. If you can help out one of the other guys in the situation, but at that point you're just trying to keep yourself safe. Uh, generally, in a four man in the sled, sometimes if you're at the top of the track, you're going to get out. I don't imagine that that German brake woman. I don't imagine she kicked out. I imagine she got sucked out because the the friction from the ice will just. Sometimes just pull you right out. Right. And, uh, and then what do you do in that I mean, situation? I, do you crawl into a ball? Point, I mean, I, I, I've, it's happened to me before, and I've just put my hands in my, like, you know, we have open helmets or open face shields. I just put my hands right there because, you know, or else they're going to get slapped along the thing. And right. Just curl up in the fetal position. And just and, try to and slide hold on. its way through. And hold on. And wow. wait to so, stop, huh? Yeah, exactly. Because you're going to make, the sled's going to make it to the bottom of the track. That's the thing. When you start at the top, you're going to get to the bottom. Right. You, you know, you can do <laughs> you have the, no we choice. Can, we can do this the easy way or the hard way is pretty much what happens. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, I've, I've I've been held up at gunpoint once when I was uh, in Houston a few summers ago, and outside of that, every single time I crash is the scariest moment of my life. Wow! The, the the crash I'm involved in at the time is the scariest moment. The crash I was involved in before that is the second, and then they go down. Then the next one I be in I'm in will be the scariest, and then they'll fall down the line like that. Steve Messler's on. The only scarier thing was being held up at gunpoint. Now now that's why it's important when you go back to the top of that one more time, and you guys are about ready to go down, and you're about ready to get gold. Because it's not an easy thing. I mean, I know what you said. It's like a training run. You've done it a thousand times. But you also know that the track's a little messed up. And I guess there's the, there is that chance you could blow it. Yeah, there's no, no doubt about it. We didn't want to be those guys. That would have been the worst. We, we went to bed the night before being like, there's a small part of you. Try not to think of it that way. But there's a small part of you being, let's not be those guys. Yeah. Let's not choke on this yeah, one. Yeah, let's not be those Americans that you know, had the pressure. And, and so you know, we, we, had, we, were, you know, we were favored to win. Uh, it was talked about a lot. It was, you know, we had we had dealt with that 62 year number. I didn't really know that 62 year number until the season began. Yeah. Uh, and we heard that number hundreds of times from everybody we encountered. Uh, and it's a it's a strange feeling to think that you know we had that pressure, we had those expectations, and then we actually wound up coming through, coming through with it. I remember Kurt and I are sitting there, we're on the flower ceremony, and I'm looking at him, and and I'm like, really, like really? Dude? And Bucky Gleason, and I had that same moment 
where I'm, I'm, you know, Bucky's been reporting on me for you know almost a decade now, yeah. and we're doing our NBC interview, and we're in the mix zone there, and Bucky's kind of he's in the spot where he happens to be, his spot happens to be right over the shoulder of the, the NBC reporter, and uh, there was a moment where we we just kind of looked at each other, and I kind of had this look like, really, dude, is this uh, are we <laughs> am I actually in the middle of this right now, or did I miss something? Yeah. And, uh, as so many have choked, you know. I mean, you look at the uh, the American hope over the past few Olympics. You know, Bodie Miller, the pressure was on him to bring back all these medals, and he he just it was only yeah, it was only this it. year when he had no pressure right. where where really he he capitalized. Lindsey yeah. Vaughn, a lot of pressure on her. She did come through with some, but I mean, not to what people expected. So yep. a lot of pressure gets put on these teams when they're expected to do so, and and very few follow through and are able to come through and bring home the championship uh, like you did. Yeah, let me ask you something. What is it that that helps with that pressure? Is there somebody on the team? That who blo- breaks that pressure up, or is it, I think it's doing the hokey, or doing the hokey, <laughs> no, or, or just knowing that you've prepared so meticulously that it should be an you should be no, an automatic you're at the pilot. top of the hill, and I think that's kind of what happened to a lot of the Canadians at the beginning of the games, where they had the the weight of the world, yeah. the expect the weight of their country on them, and they took that into the race, into the competition. You know, they would if you know a good friend of mine, she did not do what you know the job she hoped to do, and at the end she. You know, I feel like I've let down my country. I feel like I've let down my family. And, and you can't go into these races thinking that. You, you have to go in being just as selfish as you've always been at the moment. It's, it's not until after the games when you realize. And literally, it wasn't until I got off the plane in New York and Atlanta and Buffalo when I really felt the, the, you know, the scope of what we've done and how proud people were and how much they did see it as themselves. And we've always been waiting. And, and I've said it before where, you know, I was, I've always been, you know, when you watch a Super Bowl or a Stanley Cup and, you know, Half the country was rooting for the Saints. Half the country was rooting for the Colts. It was Saints and Colts this year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. My, my yeah. whole world is a little bit off right now. That's what Bucky was telling us. And, right? uh, yeah. and you know, half the country's rooting for them. Half the country's rooting for the other team. And the morning, now they kind of bicker and argue about, you know, who should have won, who would have. But, you know, when you watch the Olympic Games, it's not like that. In the Olympic Games, I've always been, and that's always a dream I've had, was the Sunday morning, knowing that we race Friday, Saturday, is the Sunday morning. People, whether wherever they were in the country, they went to church, synagogue, work, the park, they all got together, and people that were Saints fans, people that were Colts fans, came up to each other and said, "See what our boys did last night. You see what we did last night. Yeah. You know, you know, we were awesome last night. You know, and that and that was us. You know, and we we, we it still gives me chills to think about that 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 we were that uniting force for just a day, for just a morning, for just a night. Mm-hmm. We were that uniting force where the entire country looked at us and said, we're proud of them because they're us." Steve Messler's on with us. I wanted to ask you, though, what, what goes on now? For the first time in my life, I get to kind of enjoy what I've done. Uh, everything, I've, everything I've always done has been about what's... What getting little, here. It's about getting here and getting to this thing that I'm tapping right now. And uh, so for the first time in my life, I kind of get to just relax and not get ahead of myself and not look to what I'm going to do four years from now okay. or not look to what I'm going to do a year from now. Right now, I get to just go around and share this and enjoy it. And, you know, the, whether, whether somebody's... 10 years old or whether they're 50 years old, the look on their face is the same thing when the, when the medal's around and when they get to interact with it. And that's the coolest part is that, that I get to, you know, it's like, Christmas, it's, it's like Christmas morning and I, you know, you get to giving is, when you're older, you know, when you're younger, receiving is great. But when you're older, giving is so much more fun than receiving. And that's, and that's what the medal is now. Is, it was such a blast to, to receive and now it's so much fun that I get to give that everywhere I get to, everywhere that's I cool. go. Want more? Check out ShredRigging.com 24-7. Rock Radio 103.3 The Edge.